All right, welcome to your first instructional video for when you're at home. Just wanted to kind of show you this to remind you that if you go to my teacher webpage, all you have to do is click IGCSE literature slash English 2 CP over here, and that will lead you to all of the documents you'll possibly need. And you'll notice on your handout, it is labeled one. So you will look for 1.01. .01. That's the same assignment, okay? So we're gonna open up this document. I already downloaded it. And I just kind of want to walk you through what we're looking at. So first of all, when we read poetry, we can kind of recognize this poetry, right? It's got short lines. It's got kind of broken up into pieces. And when we read it together, we're going to hear some things that make us think, yes, it is poetry. But when you first read poetry, you're not going to get the full meaning right away. So my example is think of it like a piece of gum. So you take out a piece of gum and you can usually smell it before you unwrap it, right? And then you can unwrap it and you smell it a little bit stronger but you have to actually put it in your mouth and chew it for a while in order to get the flavor and to really enjoy it. And, you know, eventually if you're using a bubble gum, you can blow a bubble from your gum and it expands. And that's a really cheesy uh, analogy, but that's basically what reading poetry and eventually what reading longer books is going to be. You know, you can read it once, you can unwrap it and you'll get a little bit of it, but you really have to mess with it and play with it and really sit there and chew on it and think about it to get the full meaning. So I want to walk you through the way I read this poem, the We Wear the Mask poem. And that way you can kind of see my thought process and see the way I read and the way I annotate. Um, you're welcome to annotate along, or you can make your own annotations as you go as I kind of explain it, okay? So first of all, I'll read it once, just straight through read it. So this is We Wear the Mask by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. We wear the mask that grins and lies. It hides our cheeks and shades our eyes. This debt we pay to human guile, with torn and bleeding hearts we smile, and mouth with myriad subtleties. Why should the world be overwise in counting all our tears and sighs? Nay, let them only see us while we wear the mask. We smile, but oh, great Christ, our cries to thee from tortured souls arise. We sing, but oh, the clay is vile beneath our feet, and long the mile but let the world dream otherwise. We wear the mask, okay? So all I've done is read it, right? That's it. Now, I'm gonna go back and kind of look at things that we notice. I'm gonna sneeze, I apologize. So take a moment. <coughs> hmm, excuse me. Take a moment and think, okay, am I gonna be able to annotate this? Oh, the annotation tools are down there. Um, okay, how am I going to read this a little bit more closely? So while I pull up my drawing abilities, I'm going to use red. So the first thing I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at the title. Let's go away. And I notice there's this we, right? We wear the mask. We wear it. So what I'm going to do is you see I've circled the we. And I've underlined the we in the first line. I'm going to draw a little carrot. And I'm going to write who's we. And please forgive me for my handwriting. It's normally bad and it's going to be doubly bad on a laptop. So please forgive me and hang in there. But all I've done is I've just made a little comment like who's we, right? Because this is written by one person. So we know it's not like a singular we. We is plural. So who is he talking about here? All right, and we wear the mask that grins and lies. So we notice the mask is this kind of main, I'm gonna put out here and put symbol or motif. Now you might be familiar with these terms, you might not be. A symbol is an item that represents something larger than itself, so like a physical item. So like you have your phone, it's a physical item, right, a phone, but it could maybe represent communication. It could represent connection, right? That's that broader thing. So here, I know the mask has to represent something, but I'm not quite sure what yet. So we wear the mask that grins and lies. It hides our cheeks and shades our eyes. So I'm just going to kind of put hides because I noticed that it's something that it's doing, right? It's actively doing something. So it's hiding something. This debt we pay to human guile. Now, I'm not exactly sure what guile means. I'm going to put a little question mark. What I can do is I can go into the internet or I can go into a dictionary and I can look it up and say, okay, what does guile mean? I'm not going to do that yet. 
right? I'm just going to see, okay, if I read, do I understand what's happening? Okay, so we're just going to kind of put a little pause on that, put a little pin in it. This debt we pay to human guile, with torn and bleeding hearts we smile. So here's something I notice. Torn, I'm going to put a little down arrow because it's really sad. Maybe put a little frowny face. Bleeding hearts, it's another sad. But then you smile. So we have this contradiction, which basically means they don't connect with each other. It doesn't make sense. Usually you don't smile when you're sad, right? So that's something interesting. This debt we pay to human guile with torn and bleeding hearts, we smile and mouth with myriad subtleties. Now, again, we have this phrase myriad subtleties. Now, if you're not exactly sure, excuse me, my laptop is on. If you're not exactly sure what myriad means or subtleties means, that's where, again, you're able to circle it, bracket it, if you want to do a specific system. So, like, I, I boxed in the first word, guile. So maybe with these other words, ooh, I'll box that in as well. Um, but, you know, maybe I won't. I'll just do a brief box, myriad subtleties. But for me, I know what myriad means because I actually, I use it a lot. It's one of those phrases I've picked up. So myriad means like many different. So I'm gonna kind of make a note to myself. And then subtleties, if something is subtle, that means it's not super obvious, okay? Now, I wanna kind of zoom out for a second. I wrote all of that just on stanza one. Now, I haven't made any giant discoveries yet. Really, there's nothing that I've said. I don't know what the true meaning is yet. I haven't said, oh, this is exactly what the author means yet. I'm just thinking. All annotating is, is putting your thoughts on paper, right? I'm questioning over here. I'm noticing literary devices. I'm kind of making notes to myself. It's something that helps you think. So please do not be intimidated by annotating, okay? Now I'm gonna pause on my annotating. If you've been following along this far, great, but I want you to see what you can do to really pull into it, okay? I want you to look at the next stanzas, right? Why should the world be over wise and counting all our tears and sighs? Nay, let them only see us while we wear the mask. So take a moment. I want you to pause this video if you'd like, kind of think it through. I want you to annotate it just the way I have. So just put your thoughts on paper for, for the second and the third stanza. Pause here. I'm gonna kind of explain it a little bit in a minute, but I am not going to kind of go through and annotate the way I did the first stanza. So pause, annotate, and be right back. Did you pause? I'm gonna assume you paused. So welcome back. Um, but with the second and, and third stanza, in the first stanza, we've just learned that there's a mask that is actively hiding something. It's hiding our face. And that even though we are hurt and we are torn and bleeding, we are still smiling. So that's kind of that weird contradiction. Now we have, why should the world be over wise and counting all our tears and sighs? They let them only see us while we wear the mask. So now we have this idea, they're only seeing this mask. They're not seeing us. So that kind of ties into this idea of we are smiling even though we are sad. So put a pin in that. And then the last stanza, we smile, but oh great Christ, our cries to thee from tortured souls arise. We sing, but oh the clay is vile beneath our feet and long the mile. So again, we're smiling, we're singing on one hand, smiling, singing. On the other hand, everything is really dark and bad. So we have this mix, but let the world dream otherwise, we wear the mask, right? So you want you to think. This author is talking about a mask, right? That's really what he's writing about. But do we think that that's entirely what he's trying to say? Is he saying, and this is, this is ironic right now because we are wearing face masks, but is he saying that humans literally wear masks all the time? Not necessarily, right? So when you think about it, and it's over here on this paper, you wanna think about the surface topic versus the true topic. So the surface topic is what it's literally talking about. So what is Paul, is it Paul? Yes, what is Paul Dunbar literally writing about? Like literally on the page. But what is he trying to say? Usually literature and poetry try to say something about the human experience or try to share something or share a moral 
So he's trying to tell us something. So you want to think, okay, he's saying that as humans, even though we are hurt and we have a long way to go and we struggle and we're sad, then it's, we're still smiling and we're still showing other people that we're happy and trying to convince them that they're happy. So I want you to take a moment. I'm not going to give you the answer. I want you to think about that. Think about, okay, what is he trying to say with this message? Reread it if you'd like to. Finish up your annotating. Go back through. But it's really like a mystery. You have to pick all of these puzzle pieces together and figure out what he's really trying to say. Okay? So that's your assignment for today. You'll fill out this paper. And please, when you're annotating, make those notes to yourself. Make it messy. Um, if you just underlined random words, you are not going to remember when you go back what you were thinking, and I'm not going to be able to tell what you were thinking to help you with things. So make notes, annotate, and think about what is that true topic, not just the surface topic.